Okay, this video is part two, where we will continue on in P6, adding activities, assigning the relationships, and scheduling the project. Okay, we have our two WBS elements. Let's go ahead and create the uh, schedule now. For early work, I'm going to assign mobilize, deliver piles, and excavate, and drive piles. Uh, then I'll use the other six activities for foundation. So early work. I, to create the activity, I select the WBS element that I want to work in, which you can see by this little red, this little orange box where I have selected. You can click anywhere in here, it doesn't matter. Um, we just want to have it selected so that when you click this plus sign for an activity, the activity we're adding inserts itself within that WBS. I, I had turned off that little start with uh, that first timers window, the wizard or whatever it's called. If you just create an activity, you probably have a little pop-up. we got to click next a bunch of times to go through it. I click that little button that says, don't show me this again because I don't need it. Um, you're welcome to do, I'd probably recommend doing the same because it doesn't give you that much value. Um, okay, the activity is now here. I don't adjust the ID, activity ID, just like I didn't for the WBS elements, but I will change the name to mobilize. I will tab over to the original duration and say one. Um, let me change this time scale so that yeah, you can see more. Okay, I want to create the next activity, deliver piles. Deliver piles takes four days. And excavate. Excavate takes eight days. And one more, let's do drive piles and drive piles takes three days notice as I create these activities after I hit enter and be done with it they're sorting themselves right now um, by ID smallest to largest it says here it's by start date which it is by start date but they're all the same start date because the schedule activities assume the earliest start date available which is today uh, I think the next level of sorting is by ID Again, I don't really sweat it. I've seen a lot of uh, new P6 users really stress out about how these activities show up. But you can click anything, and it'll sort small, you know, alphanumerically. At the end of the day, we are going to assign logic and schedule the activity, schedule out the project, at which point you'd want to sort by start date so that you get a cascading view of a, a schedule like you typically see in construction. But when you're brand new, creating up a project for the first time, using uh, something that's printed out for you or another project or something, usually you want to sort it by activity ID because you're usually adding the activities um, in the order that which you want to assign logic and that will speed you up. Okay, let's keep adding all of these activities. Once you create all of them, we can then assign the logic. So we're done with the early work WBS. Let's now go to foundation. I'll click this plus sign to create another activity and we will create prefab forms. Uh, tabbed over to the original duration, and I said six, six days. Uh, deliver rebar takes 14 days. Fine grade takes two days. Set forms takes six days. High rebar takes five days, and finally, pour concrete takes one day. So we have all of our activities here. We now need to assign the logic so that we can uh, finish the schedule. And assigning logic is essentially drawing the arrows in a network diagram. So we select one activity. Let's like mobilize the first one. And notice down here uh, in the Activity Details tab, and if this is missing, you can get it by clicking right here. Um, so you can say View Show on Bottom. It typically always has the details, but in case you don't, hit that button or say View Show on Bottom Details. Now Mobilize, I will click on Successors and I'll click add, and this is where we select 
the activities that we want to uh, assign as a successor. So mobilize, we know we have four successors, deliver piles, excavate, prefab forms, and deliver rebar. So we just select them here, deliver piles, highlight it, and then you click this blue, uh, I'm sorry, this green plus sign to assign. Then we have excavate, we select it, assign, drive piles. Oh, not drive piles, it's not a successor. Deliver piles, excavate, prefab forms, and deliver rebar. Now close this window when I'm done. Notice the relationship is fin FS, finish to start. So it's a finish to start relationship. The finish of mobilize dictates the start of these successor activities. That's what we want. In our schedule that we're duplicating the network diagram, every relationship tie that we have is a finish to start relationship. So that's good. So it defaults to the most common relationship uh, in, in scheduling. We'll keep working down the list. Um, in our network diagram, we can see that drive piles is a successor to both deliver piles and excavate. So two ways of doing it. We can go to deliver piles and assign the successor and then go to excavate and assign the same successor. Or we can go to the activity we're thinking about, drive piles, click the predecessor button and assign the two, draw, two predecessors to drive piles. So we have deliver piles and we have uh, excavate. Both these predecessors are finished to start to drive piles. So FS is the correct relationship. Notice uh, I could, you know, if I go now to deliver piles and see successors, I will see drive piles is there. Okay, but excavate successors, drive piles is there. So it works both directions, whichever is easier for you or makes the most sense to you. For beginners, I, like I kind of recommend picking one mode and just going with it, even if it takes extra clicks. Uh, once you become more comfortable, you should probably pick the most efficient one for you. Okay, next up, fine grade. Fine grade, we have um, one predecessor, which is drive piles. So predecessors, assign, drive piles, finish to start, good. Um, let's go to set forms. Predecessor, I have two predecessors, drive piles and prefab forms. Sign drive piles and prefab forms. Okay, finish to start, all good. Now we can go to tie rebar. Tie rebar, we have three predecessors. We have fine grade, set forms, and deliver rebar. Predecessors, assign fine grade. Notice I'm just double clicking. Uh, you can click and then hit the plus or just double click. Fine grade, set forms, and delivery bar. Okay. And now pour, con uh, pour concrete. The predecessor to pour concrete is tie rebar. Okay, so I think I added all of them, but nothing looks different. So what the heck is going on? Um, it's nice when you're creating the schedule to use um, to make sure your, your relationship lines are being displayed. If I click this button, I now see the arrows showing the finish to start relationships. Uh, that's good. I see they popped up. I like to see that. But again, it doesn't look right because they're all stacked. They all have the exact same start date. So we can't really check if we did this thing correctly. Um, it's important to know in P6 that it doesn't actually schedule the project until you do the CPM analysis. That is the forward pass, the backward pass, calculate the float. So we have to click this clock right here for schedule. It tells you the data date. The data date is the date that the schedule assumes is the earliest, is, is the, um, earliest day that work can commence, essentially. So we're going to say today, that's fine, July 15th. I click schedule, and now I have a schedule. All the activities moved. I see start dates. I see finish dates. I see a critical path. Let me go ahead here in columns and I'm going to adjust what information is being displayed. Uh, instead of using these organizations, I like to just uh, sort by a list alphabetically. And total float. So 
So to check my work, I can see that I have four days of float in drive piles. That's correct. I have five days of float in prefab forms. That's correct. I'm, I'm comparing this to the network diagram I copied. Uh, deliver rebar has three days of float. That's correct. And four days of float in fine grade. That's good. My critical path is indeed mobilized to excavate, to drive piles, to set forms, to tie rebar, to pour concrete. All good. And it, what I see my duration for my project is 24 days. That's exactly the, the finish date for pour concrete for the network diagram. So if we did it correctly, it's great. That's it for this video. I um, wanted to walk you through start to finish. There's obviously a lot of details about P6 that we can discuss and we will discuss in the future. But for now, thanks for watching.